Hi guys, welcome back to 100% Max. So this is, of course, the full stadium tour uh, that I did, of course, ahead of the Chelsea game. It was actually the day before the Chelsea game uh, that we did this stadium tour. So this one is a very special stadium tour in the fact that we did get to see uh, what happens behind the scenes ahead of a Premier League game, a big Premier League game as well, as it was Newcastle United versus Chelsea at St James's Park under the lights of course a game that we did come away from uh, winners thanks to a Joel Willock goal and um, I just want to give a shout out of course to our tour guide uh, who took her around on the tour behind the scenes at St James's Park of course uh, which was Nick uh, so a big shout out to Nick uh, of course absolutely fantastic tour guide um, you know and it was just a really amazing experience to be able to go around the stadium and see you know all of the improvements that's happened since the last time i was on a stadium tour which was back in like 2004 2005 uh, during the bobby robson period at the club so quite a while uh, has passed and quite things few things have changed since then of course uh, when i went on the stadium tour with my family back then that was uh, under the John Hall period uh, in the Freddie Shepard period of Newcastle United of course we have had you know Mike Ashley at the club he's now gone and now we have Amanda Stavely, the Rubens and of course PIF owning the club so this was the first time I've been on the stadium tour uh, under the brand new owners and I've got to say if you haven't been on it yet I suggest you do absolutely fantastic uh, to a absolutely fantastic experience uh, for die-hard Newcastle United fans or just you know fans of other clubs who want to have a taste you know of the history of Newcastle United the history of a very historic Premier League club but anyway I won't bore you anymore here is Hey guys! I went to Bladen Race, this was on the 9th of June 1862 on a summer's afternoon I jumped the bus at Pambara and she was heavy laden Away we went along Collarwood Street, that's on the way to Bladen me lads, you should have seen them gown, passing the folks along the road just as they were standing. Lots of lads and lasses there, always smiling faces, gunning along the stops with road. You see the bloody braces. We blow past on cross factory and up to the Robin and Deer. Just gonna run to the railway bridge, the bus wheels blow up there. The lasses lost their crinolines and the fields had hide their faces. I've got two black eyes and a broken nose and getting to play the races. Oh, me lads, be sure to see them gunning. Passing the folks along the road just as they were standing. Lots of lads and lasses there, always smiling faces. Gunning along the stops the road. To see the bled and races. Noses broke, they came back our yen. Some went to the dispensary, and some to Dr. Gibbs's, and some to the infirmary to mend the broken ranges. Oh, me lads, you should have seen them gunning, passing the folks along the road just as they were standing. Lots of lads and lasses there, always smiling fierces, gunning along the stops with road to see the bleeding races. Paradise, 
it was funny games begun. There was four and twenty young the ones, and how they danced the song. They called on me to sing a song, and I sang on Paddy Fagan. I danced the jig and I swung me twig the day I went to blade and Oh, me lads, you should have seen them gang. Passing the folks along the road just as they were standing. Lots of lads and lasses there, all the smiling and faces. Gang along the stops the road to see the blade faces. Across the Tyne Bridge, we came to play in tune. The barman he was calling them, they called him Jackie Maroon. I saw him talking to some chips, and then he was persuading. The gun seemed Jody really short, the mechanics all had laden. Oh, me lad, you should have seen him gunning. Passing the folks along the road just as they was coming. Lots of lads and lasses there, I was smiling fierce. Gunning along the stops with road to see the blind races. The rain had poured down all of the air and made the grounds quite muddy. Coffee Johnny had a white hat on, the young wheat stole a cuddy. There were spice stores and monkey shows and our wives selling ciders. And the chap on the half and round and vouch out no more lads for riders. Oh, me lads, you should have seen the cannon. Passing the folks along the road just as they was done. Lots of lads and lasses there, always smiling fierce. Coming along the stops for the To see the bleeding racer. Right, this is the players entrance, but only the way players come in here. Our home players is in the uh, uh, exit tunnel, just up to the right, and that's where the home players come in. So when I mentioned the other one, you know exactly what I mean. So if any if the kids ever want autographs, don't come here. Go to the top next up, yeah, especially if you meet Max, you might get a watch or something as well. <laughs> I hope before the game, they'll walk up here. Yeah. Usually there's about three or four hundred mad Johnny shouting and screaming at them, shouting abuse at them, and then they come in here. Yeah. This is where all our great players of the past, this is where we intimidate them with these players. <laughs> we'll start over here, yeah, we've got Super Mac. The oldest 21 year old I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> uh, that was him scoring his hat trick for Liverpool. Up there, we've got Newcastle beating Sutton with that every free kick back in the day. 1997, what a day that was. Barcelona, hat trick hero Tino. That night, I had tickets for all the aces and I had tickets for the Barcelona game. Lucky enough, I came to St James's Park and that was rocking. More than the arena, I mean, I promise you. The place was absolutely buzzing that night. What a night. 1996, we've got Les Ferdinand scoring one of five against Manchester United. One of them lads over there. Yeah. We've got Mr. Batty with him. Unfortunately, one of the ladies, Mr. Juno, has got his face the other way. 1951, we've got Joe Harvey lifting one of the FA Cups. 1993, that was Andy Cole making his debut with Mr. Eyre. Mr. David Kelly on his shoulders, a very underrated player, Mr. Kelly. Uh, here we've got 1969, that was the last trophy won, it was a European trophy. 1969, we've got Bob Moncur's back clock. clock. Last but not least, we've got Mr. Sheeran, 2006 at the Stadium of Lane, scoring a goal. We've also got these two busts here. One of Bobby Robson. What do you say about Bobby Robson? Uh, legend. He's an absolute legend. Managed in Spain, Portugal, Holland, uh, more importantly, England and Newcastle. This, this bus was unveiled in 1975. We were playing Man United at home. We had before he died. Uh, Alex Ferguson and Cape Town unveiled this bus. Good friends with Bobby on and off the field. Local hero, local lad, his name's still going now with the Bobby Robson Foundation, still making millions for Charlie. I don't think anyone's got a bad word to say about Bobby. The other local hero straight across is uh, Jackie Milburn, stands near that room. It's an indicator of how well thought he was here. Uh, he's also got three cup winning medals there, 51, 52 and 55. In the 55 final, he scored what was at the time the quickest ever FA Cup goal. 
there and has been beaten since. He's also got a silver medal around his neck to commemorate the 1950 World Cup that he participated in in Brazil. Jackie was a local lad, as I say, from Ashton, cousins of the late Jackie Charlton and Bobby Charlton. Also, back in the day, Jackie used to be a minor before he was a footballer. He was getting 12 pounds a week. Remember in this lad playing on England, and it was a Newcastle night, the legend, he was getting 12 pounds a week. And in the close season, he was getting six pounds a week. He had to go back down the mines because he couldn't afford to live in the close season. Look at him now. Uh, right, we'll move next. I'll just stop with you for a couple of minutes. Busy old place when there's match day. Obviously, you've got your quick interview board there. That's when they come out have a quick interview there. There's a flash interview room there, tiny little box room it is. But the main media room's down there for after after the match conference, uh, signing new players, etc. That's all there. This all has changed about recently. Uh, that used to be the way changing room. That was the home changing room. But in 2006, it all changed. Last game we had in there was a uh, Shiraz testimonial back in 2006. Now the home change room is there. That is now the away changing room, and that is the match officials. And it all come with this room here. Dome control. Dome control came. They can come, they can take two players anytime they like, either here or the training grounds, and they have to give a sample before they come. Get out. Well, not get, but they've got to give a sample. Uh, the worst case scenario I heard is Phil Jagielka, playing for Liverpool, uh, Everton, sorry. He was in there. Four hours. <laughs> Didn't get away till nine o'clock that night. Uh, even Martin has come down and said, Phil, we've got to go. It was about half past six. We're good. We put him in a taxi at about half past nine with a pizza and sent him back to Liverpool. But that's how long ago it was. Uh, four and a half hours is the worst. But we have not had a positive result here or at the training grounds from home or away players, thankfully. So that's a good sign of things. I'm going to take in the way of change room. Won't get on about way of change rooms forever, about what's happened here and all the little bits and pieces. I'll tell you a few stories, but we could, really could go on forever. So we'll, we'll pop in here, take a seat, and I'll give you a few tales. <laughs> Conditioner on here. If you have a sit down, I'll give you just a couple of minutes flat, and then you can take some for us. He's stretching the boots and steaming the steamer. I'm trying to find a seat where she can sit. Oh, the lads are picking out of them already. They keep pork. What usually happens is uh, the players will come in about three, three and a half hours before. Oh, sorry, That's what I Players will usually come in about three, three and a half hours before. Hit Sky Sports on there, they'll come have a little bit of crack. Then they'll go through to that room. It used to be the players' lounge. Through the COVID years, they used it as a changing room because this wasn't even big enough. But now it's like a tactical room and a, a warm up and a warm down room. So that's what they're doing there. So the squad, you take the whole squad through there. <coughs> then Eddie will announce the match day squad. The rest of the players will go up where I'm going to take you through later on. I'll tell you where they're 
players' boxes where the executive boxes are. So the rest of the match day squad will come in, yeah. There'll be, as you can see, the kit man is just a bit weird. He's got that fire so. legend. So he's starting. <laughs> anyway, they'll have that four or five pairs of boots. They'll have that sliders. They'll have that two tops. They'll have that training gear. Any other requirements, the kit man will have it out with me now. Uh, it does look good, but it's all set out. They've got that two strips. They do want to open that two strips, one by either half. Some players will throw them into the crowd. Uh, Callum Wilson likes to come and get his sign and he usually gives it to charity. But one of the players, some of them players just throw them in the wash. Whatever they want to do at the time, that's what they'll do. Uh, the only time they'll get destroyed is if they've got blood on them or if they're ripped on it and like that. So they'll all come in here, we'll get the final details. And you'll go through individually with these boards, he goes through player, he'll go through all the defence, he goes through the midfielder. The rep is very, very thoroughly, uh, really good. The replicants were about six towels each a game. The replicants, there's towels everywhere after the game. It's a proper mess. <laughs> anyway, I need to mention to them, please don't walk in the showers there, because if you do, you'll get soaked, because it's showers come on automatically. <laughs> you walk in there, what? poor lads, can I use them? The hat and that. So you've got magic eyes on. If you want a bit hotter, you give it that side. If you want a bit cooler, you give it that side. We've got the treatment room there, uh, toilets there, uh, the ice baths there set at seven degrees. It's like lying in all sea in the middle of winter. Uh, Sam Allardyce and Shira used to insist on people going in them. I think any house is a bit more relaxed thing. I don't think there's many of them going as now. But there's also Massage beds there because there's, there's a few of the players like massage before and after the games. And as I say, you've got the showers there. Uh, above, you've got all the lockers. The, this side, the lockers have all got safes in because that's where Max and them sit for his Rolex was down. <laughs> that side, so, uh, if you notice, all the defenders are on that side. I don't think they've got safes in there. They must be on the porters. <laughs> yeah. So uh, they're not all up above. As it, the towels at the back. Uh, Tellies, that telly is only comes out the weekends, so they can plug their laptop into that telly, so that will get if they need to analyze anything to the game, they'll do it on that telly there. That one's just for Sky Sports, etc. Got one of the boom box, yeah. Used to be a lot of arguments some of the players, what music they listen to, etc. etc. Now it's every player gets three songs, puts them in there, and goes on random, so there's no more arguments. That's Eddie said that. Eddie's a uh, little. Um, coffee machine as well. There's usually a little bit of almond milk in there. But today we've just got nutrition drinks, we've got energy drinks, we've got isotonic drinks. On top of here, in here we've got the protein, we've got hydro drinks. On top of here will be all the flapjacks, the energy bars, all kinds like that. Fruit, plenty of bananas, the, the like bananas, jack I kid, all that will be on top of there. That's for them to eat. I think that's a good that in here. Obviously we've got a countdown clock, what I was saying before. That's a that's a big hindrance if that kit man forgets to do it. The manager will be looking his watch all the time. While the speaker's up there for the six minute buzzer, that'll tell you you need to be in the, the tunnel within a minute. Because you need to be in there five minutes before. As I say, especially on television, there will be big fights if they're not there. Has anybody got any questions? I'll let you take some photos and then we'll go down the media room. So I'll give you a couple of minutes, take some photos. And then we'll go down the media room. But I'm just asking if you had Bruno's or Maxi's, which are usually the most popular ones, and you take a photo and move on so someone else can get a piece. Thank you very much. <laughs> Right, we're ready. Can we move down there? In the room, please. Did you see them? Did you see them yet? No, sorry. <laughs> That's where Eddie sits, I think. Yeah. Right, now, this is basically this is more for a fourth opportunity. There's not much to say here. Yeah. They come down after the match. Obviously, you can see this as well. The press sits. 
Next door is where they'll do all their, all the portals and everything for their laptops, etc. Send their reports all over the place. There's rumour about 140 press people. You've got to give your name at the desk. If your name's not on the thing, you don't get in. There'll be a press officer in the corner. He'll vet the questions. Uh, always the away manager comes in first, gives his press conference because they need to be away earlier. So they would do the same for us. So the way for, if there's any uh, new signings, this is probably where it'll get done. Kath Kitchen next door. Kath used to work here as a TV well, yes, 50 odd years she worked. Seen off 26 managers that was. And she died a few years ago. So in, in respect to her, that's been named after her. All this is is where Eddie sits here. Raw uh, Tindall or the man of the match or whatever, I'll sit beside him. If anyone wants to get their photos, come up. If you want me to take them, I'll take them. If your family will take them. But please don't touch the mics, that's all I'll say. After this, we're going to go to the pitch side. Please don't go on the pitch. No one's allowed on the pitch. Get <laughs> sat. So please don't go on the pitch. Uh, so, just basically, if anyone wants to... Uh, Along the road, just as they were standing, lots of lads and lasses there. I was smiling faces, gunning along the stops with road. You see the bleeding braces. Straight across there, that's where the ball comes up. This is where the port of fishing is. 
Six and maybe walk up to it. If you walk from the bottom, it's 14 flights of stairs and 140 steps. I don't sit up again. I need, I need oxygen when I get to the top. And I'm out before anyone says I'm bus. TRB. It is, it is a height. Anyway, this is, this is the Milburn stand. This is Jackie Milburn stand. Uh, it's our family enclosure. It's all, it runs from about here to the end of the end of the stand. Uh, you, you, you get charged about five hundred pounds for adult and child. It's probably one of the biggest family stands in the Premiership, and the cheapest as well. It's uh, pretty decent. So everyone, right? As I say, forty flights of stairs, one hundred and forty steps. You do need oxygen when you get up here. Uh, 500 shorts, we cannot open without having 500 shorts on duty. We usually have between 550 and 600 per match, dear. That's safety shorts only. Thank you for turn size again. you in and out as quickly as possible. That capacity is wrong now. The capacity now is 52,312. We have got more executive seats and there's a little bit more wheelchair access on every level as well. Uh, at the time of building, this was the biggest cantilever roof in the country, uh, in Europe even, 68 metres. The now, there is two of that bigger in the world. They've got the Olympic Stadium, West Ham Stadium in London, and there's also a South Korean cinema that has a bigger cantilever roof. The beauty of the cantilever roof is there's no obstructions to your view when you get out there. The downside of it, it plays havoc with the pitch, as I'll explain when we get out there as well. Uh, Anyway, for those that haven't been to St James's Park before, welcome to St James's Park, enjoy the views. I'll give you a little bit of history about the ground when we get outside. Yeah, right, where do we start? As I said, we're in the 
Jackie Milburn stands, family closure. Straight ahead of us is the East Stand, this is our smaller stand that was built in 72, opened in 73. The reason is the smaller stand is we cannot build up or back because behind that stand is Lisa's Terrace, which are listed buildings. So that was the oldest stand. The bone of the stadium from left, which is the Lisa stand, right we've got the Gallagher stand, the bone of the stadium from there right round to the corner of the stand was redeveloped in 96. We were going to move into Lisa Park, but we could not get planning permission. We stopped the planning permission, they wouldn't let them go into Lisa's Park. Then they decided to build level seven, which was finished in the year 2000. We did get kind of permission to go across the Gallagher's, but because we're at the metro station, except for many, the engineering costs were going to be way too high for the present owner. So we decided to get ahead for the present owner. Uh, no, the previous owner, yeah. I should have said, not the present owner. I got me, I got me words wrong there. Yeah. <laughs> you said that, not me. <laughs> <laughs> right now, you mean. Yes, so we have not accomplished that, but let's remember Ashley also sold the ground behind it now. So I don't know where we stand to get that built. I don't know if it's still feasible or what. But they, look, they, they are looking into it. I think some of them are. Anyway, to the left we have the things that stand level 7. That's where our waste of all goes. With our capacity being 52,000 odd, we have to give the waste support us 3,200, which equates to about six blocks of seats. Uh, it was a cup game through the week, it was a midweek game as well, so Crystal Palace only brought five on it up, which equated to about one block, so that's what that black tower pollen is, that's where the section the we are support are off. If you look just underneath any house, black white army, there's three glass windows. The one on the very left, for the grey seats, that is our sensory room. And what our sensory room is for is there, uh, People with hidden disabilities, maybe don't like crowds, maybe don't like noise, a little bit autistic or something like that. They can go in there with a carer or with a family, home the way fans, uh, and in the, the right environment. Very good reports coming back about that to the to the to the point where you're only allowed to go in three times a year. It's that popular. So excellent. Uh, the room beside it is either BT or Sky Room, so whoever has present the game at that day, they'll do that room up to their specifications. And the room beside that is the control room. Uh, you've got your fire, your ambulance, your police, CCTV, we have 132 CCTV cameras all over, so they're watching you. As soon as you come in here, we want you safe, they'll be watching you, making sure you're safe. On that note, Suppose you're sitting there, you there with your family, uh, someone beside you is being obnoxious or maybe he's drunk or being homophobic, racist or what, whatever. Rather than you confront them, there's a number you can ring, it's in the programs, it's also in, in the toilets. Uh, you can text them and it goes to the control room. The control room will put a um, camera on him, see what he's doing, if he's still up to no good, the show will come and have a word. If he persists, he either be kicked out the ground or the PR is not good for that. If you go at that corner, if you walk through that tunnel, we have what we call our pink hotel. And our pink hotel contains five cells, police cells, from top to bottom painted pink because pink is supposed to be a soothing colour. <laughs> so do somebody at police and your know, somebody at university say it's a calm and soothing colour. So hopefully they'll take them in there, hopefully you'll calm down because they will want to lose their ticket now. Hopefully he just gets a slap on the wrist he'll have to lose here. But that's what that's for. The grass, the pitch, as I said, there's a slope, you can see that slope there now, if you look across, you can see them horns there that you couldn't see down below. Uh, the pitch is 105 by 68. This pitch gets ripped up every year. Every year, the pitch gets ripped up. They don't re-turf it anymore, they reseed it. We use a Dutch rye grass seed, and the reckon it grows in about 11 days to two weeks. So, they reseed it. And what we also have, the pitch is 10% artificial. We have uh, plastic strands every two inches that's sewn into the ground. 
You don't have to replace them every year. I think they've got about a 10 year lifespan. So, what I do when they see that the roots grow around there, the roots will grow around there, the roots will grow around there, plastic fibers just strengthens it, makes it more robust. Because when you think about the rugs, you never know, yeah, it's not looking so bad. I mean, the, the pitch usually gets cut from left to right, up and down through the week, and then at the weekend they'll cut across, just helps the lightsman looks better, and it's traditional. Uh, the light, the, the light tracks, that's just basically, if you can imagine, we're a city centre club, we've got that big roof. Even in the summer, half the time by about three o'clock, it's three quarters of it's under shade. So all these light that the one is uh, telling it, yeah, it's nice and sunny in Newcastle, please go. <laughs> Usually the light rocks are everywhere, but because it's a game on tomorrow, they'll chuck them out, they're around the ground. But the pitch will be come out from October to March, the pitch will be come out of these light rocks when there's no games on. And uh, they'll be put on what's possible for Just on that, in the summer, the pitch gets cut at least once a year, sometimes twice a year. In the winter, it's two or three times a week. We'll take the, the grounds in about three and a half hours and walk seven and a half miles and rub that grass. Obviously, there's a team of them, so they're a quick hour and more efficient. But if you were to do it by yourself, that's what you'd say. Has anyone got any questions? Right. Sorry? Did we get kicked out or did we? No, no, no. I've never seen that. It's still No, no. No, no. No, no. You can't. You've got to go down the show. You can't, no, you can't have the concert, you can't have the concert, I'll explain what we'll get to the bounce. Yeah, yeah, it's just, it's just football going to some for some reason. Some of the views we'll get, we've got the university just there, the four turrets, we've got where uh, Civic Centre, which is our town hall there. Uh, to the right, the east end of the city, if you may refer to the east end of the city, that is... Um, that is the east end of the city, that's a uh, biker, that's social housing. Believe it or not, that red, white, and blue listed is a listed build. Uh, believe that. Still amazes me to list here. And if you were to sit up in the Lisa's end, you would see the Tyne Bridge, you would see the Sage, the Millennium, the Baltic. You see all those from the top. And you also see, on a very clear day, the top of the stadium are late. <laughs> that, that's why we have had up there, so we have had On a good day, right on that horizon is our North Sea. Has anyone got any questions? Right, I'm going to give you five minutes, take some photos. If anyone wants to go right to the top and have a look at the views, but please don't go out to G&H so everyone is now all over the place so we can get away and back on where to our as soon as possible. We have that for a just give you a little bit of information about the boxes. I'll take the box, we'll have a quick look and then we'll we'll finish up on level three, we'll finish up with the director seats. So I'll show you the box seats, and I'll show you the director seats and you'll have to tell us which ones you think are the best. Anyway, as you can see, this is a city centre club. It's not just football we do anymore, it's, it's bigger than that. No, it's weddings, concerts, we'll have the Open and the League Cup, we'll have the Rugby League weekend. Just all kind of on the city now. We've got the airport five mile up the road, train station down the road, even the ferry station's only 40 miles up the road. Uh, transport links in and out of the city are, are excellent, so you need to get you in and out or wherever you need to go, you get here, no bother. We'll have 100 executive boxes, we'll have 44 on this level. They range from 30,000 plus fat up to 90,000 plus fat. From here to about, what's our uh, biggest box, Carol? 32. 32. Uh, this one's premium, the one I'm going to show you. It's Cubsy. Uh, Cubsy was the name of his first dog. But if you see NUFC, the players didn't want to put their names on the, on the doors because they didn't want people banging on the doors and asking for photographs or in, uh, whatever, you know, they just don't want to be annoyed. But, old trips, not bothered. That's what it is on. If you see, we, if, I don't know how anyone noticed downstairs, but if you look up, there's trips underneath his box yeah. as well. <laughs> when he scored against Man City, he went running up and give it, give it the old thumbs up. So he was loving it. 
This is the box we're going to go. As I say, there's 40 boxes. 645 is the players' box. Uh, that's along on the bend as well. So if they're not on the match day squad or they're injured, that's where they'll go and sit. Uh, they'll take their families in there or whatever. Talking about boxes, we're saying, well, can move. That's a lot of money between 30,000 and 90,000. That's not including your drinks. But if you were to go to Chelsea or Arsenal, certain boxes are a million. Certain boxes at Arsenal are what, like four yeah. million. Wow. I'm not saying every box, but certain boxes. Uh -huh. So it is a lot of money. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take you to the box. If we walk straight through, straight through the patio doors, but please watch the patio frame because it's got about a four inch lip on the bottom. I don't want anyone falling over. So when we go out, we'll just spread out and we'll have a look what you think of the boxes. So this is a wild shell you make. Well, actually, it is a bit tight saying I want to hop in that. I'm not put the young in there, it's a bit tight saying over the wall, isn't it? What you do, you get a nice little uh, six, seven inch booster seat. They'll put you on a booster seat, the front seat, and you got a nice blanket as well. But you can't take the blankets home, because some of them do when they try to fuel beers, they try and take that blanket home. <laughs> on, on the subject of beers, does anyone know the rules in the boxes? Only has anyone been on it? I only found that recently, and I put shutters down in boxes, so... When you have a drink? Yeah. You cannot have a drink and watch the game. You can't even stand there and shut the doors, put your drink on the table and watch the game, it's against the law. You have to shut the doors, put the blinds down. You can drink while the game's on, but you have to watch it on the television. That is the law from 1985. Still to this day, and our user, use our laughing then. The, the Germans, the Dutch, the all, the, the Italians are all laughing that one. Thinking that, but we are still, unfortunately, we are still classed as hooligans. <laughs> as I say, what we are talking about before, you couple concerts, yeah. Yeah, the rugby, the rugby share all weekend, they drink all weekend, falling about all the drunk, <laughs> <laughs> I've seen them. They're allowed like, to drink concerts, you look at Wimbledon, they have a little bit tipper. It is only, literally only football that you can't do. Is it like a lake in a start, club starting the process to try and appeal it? And I don't, not, I don't think they will, I'll be honest with you, I don't think they will. Not, not, not at the minute, because it still hasn't been eradicated. Well, actually, the German lads who I had on the other week saying that the ultras are all starting up again over there in Germany. He says they're getting more violent again because they're drinking this, they're drinking in the ground and he says the violence is starting again. So, uh, yeah, exactly. so you see that caster sign down there? That's where the Newcastle players will come through. They'll walk up here, through the tunnel, up and in. Anyway, <coughs> just say 
the boxes, it's not all about the piazzas for business as well. They'll bring the people in, they'll have a little bit of meal, few drinks, soften them up. You're allowed to stay here an hour, hour and a half later. So hopefully a bit networking, you sign on that dotted line. That's what it's all about. <laughs> so hopefully you've seen a good year move on. They're all, oh, yeah, I'll sign that before you now, he's saying he's right away. <laughs> but that's what it's all about. But just see a Shelby comes up. About six o'clock, he rings, goes, yeah, can you bring me car down? Because what they do, they leave their cars out there and the lads will take them up and park them somewhere else. So Shelby will ring, can I have me cars? I'll call up at six. Carl come down, pick them up with sterile areas here and there for taxis to get in to take the people away. And uh, etc, etc. So Shelby, he'll get his car, it'll be nice and warm for him. You drive down to Strawberry Place, then on the Barrett Road where the lights are. Well, we employ a little man that sits in the in a shack, and when Shelby sees he's going, he'll flick them right from red to green so Shelby gets straight out. He won't stand and wait. But I know what he's around thinking, who does he think he is? It's not because of that. It is literally health and safety. Because he's got his family in the car, people could be jumping out of the car, his family might get scared, he might be in, he might have had a bad game and someone might abuse him or he might spit off and hurt one of the fans that are trying to get in to see him. So it is, I know it sounds or oh, as you think he is, but it is seriously just health and safety. So as you can see in front of us, we've got all the cameras that are all set up for tomorrow. This is where the sky will be, etc. What you used to have was Camaro over there, remember when Jeff used to go and yeah. Chris has been a player, said, oh, what happened to that? Jeff, I didn't see it. Because most of the time he's talking to the fans. And he's, he's sweets and that, they're giving them sweets and that. And that's not just yeah, that's everywhere he went. He spent a lot of time talking to the fans and all else. But this is where Fox Sports last set up the yeah. yeah. They are the director seats down there, that's what we're going to go do. Just while I'm here, I'm going to point out, can you see the cameras? It's getting a bit dark now, really. There's a camera, you look across the east stand, there's a camera right at the end of the floodlights. One between oh, the yeah. L and the E, yeah. the W and the C, oh, yeah. at the end of the other ones. There's four cameras, they are 412 that are in the ground. Does any, can anyone think what they'll be for? Security. Nah, no, not yeah. oh, yeah. The RV, I've got their own centre. It's the go online technology. Because oh. what they do, they like the 3D view of it. And that's what that is. Anyway, as you can see, Shelby's got his 16 seats. That's Callum Wilson's box, 619, his is 16. The one beside us is a 10 seater. I think the smallest box is at 8, and as Carol says, the largest box is about 30 odd. So they range from different prices. We've also got them on the for right the way along, but they're a, they're a few grand cheaper because you've got to, four things have got to come up for these days. Shame, so you know, 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 the players will have the players. I don't know if they'll get any discounts. I honestly don't know if they'll get any discounts, but the players will pay for the boxes. And, and they I'm, definitely have the box. No, they used to have the box. Yeah. But I'll show you where the last time we're here, yeah, we'll go down with the director seats. One last thing we've all got the ball of the stadium. Remember, sometimes we'll keep, keep the airway supporters in. Obviously, the box is going to that hour after we all go. <coughs> Level 7. Get and doing them stairs take a little bit longer. How long do you think it takes to empty the bowl of the stadium? Oh, 10 minutes, did you say? 10 minutes, 10 minutes is what it's got to be done by. Carol's and Stuart, we got the, the uh, after the Crystal Palace game, after the penalties, the ground was emptied in five point odd minutes. But by the yeah. <laughs> it, it was a pretty poor yeah. game now, honestly, like, <laughs> even though it was still pretty poor. Yeah. Uh, but Carol's done it, she, she puts a stopwatch on. I think the first game was uh, seven point odd minutes. I think the average is six and a bit minutes. But Man City was a bit, I think if saying that, if we had won that game, we'll still wouldn't be the other ones. But we didn't. Uh, but the Bournemouth game was a bit flat, I think it was about five five summit minutes there but it ranges from about five summit minutes up to eight minutes what we used to lose back the day was empty in <laughs> minutes before the night before and well before 90 minutes has anyone got any questions right if you could follow me down to level three please
was on the 9th of June, 1862, on a summer's afternoon. I jumped the bus at Pambara, and she was heavy laden. Away we went along Hollywood Street, that's on the way to Bladen. Oh, my lad. Since 1880, the first game played here was uh, Newcastle Rangers. They played a practice match in 18. We had the East End that formed over the east end of the city. When I was telling you about the biker wall, the other side of the city, they were formed then. They played over Stanley Street. Uh, the West End formed in 1882. They, this is the West End of the town. They played on the town wall on the North Road. They came together and we formed Newcastle United in 1892. Yes, we did play in red and white. <laughs> Thankfully, it wasn't stripes, but we're seen, soon seen that our ways. If you remember, if, you, if I tell you that the league we joined in 93 had Middlesbrough, uh, Liverpool, Arsenal Woolwich and Rotherham in. What are the teams playing red and white? Still playing red and white with this day. But we didn't want to be following the route, so we went with this way. And I've heard a load of stories about this, that and the other. It wasn't mud pies nest in the city there uh, in the stadium or I've heard the William Cavendish uh, the Marcus Newcastle his troops fought in black and white uh, the Dominican friars walked around the city in black and white the truth of the matter is we went to the <coughs> Northumbria FA asked to lend some strips uh, they played in Shepherd's Plaid that was a black and white tour and that's where the black and white strips came from. Any questions on that? I'll quickly go through these badges and then we'll go through This is Newcastle's coat of arms. You, you will see this badge around the city, just at the top of North Dublin Street, etc. Uh, we've been wearing this badge since 1911, but it wasn't only officially recognised as an official emblem in '69. In '76, we went a bit more modern. We went with the, the blue. The, do you know anyone knows what the blue signifies? The time. Has anyone seen the time that colour? <laughs> no. It's always like the greeny black with a trolley stick or something like that. So we've got the time, we've got the, the magpie, we've got the castle. Uh, then we went a bit retro in 83. Uh, I'm sure we'll all remember the silver strip with the blue star, the buckler strip. Not my favourite badge, that one. Uh, it didn't last long. In 88, we went to the old, back to the old traditional, but with a little bit modern twist to it. We've got the time, we've got our black and white colours, we've got our maritime links for the ship building, the coal was shipped, the steel was shipped, we've got the demi lion, but we haven't got the St George's Cross no more. The blue signifies where links to the Baltics and the Scandinavians, that's where that come from. So that's what that's, that's the best part, without a doubt. <laughs> we'll just go out there, we'll explain some of these quickly. These early 1900s was definitely the best time to be a Newcastle United supporter. But times are coming good, so all the kids here have feared because he's a player <laughs> who's the, the chosen generation. Anyway, back in the early 1900s, these lads called the Teddy Boys all helped the Warders. 05, 07, 09, we won the league. We won the FA Cup in 1910, but we're also runners up in 05, 06, and 08. What do you see figures like that? <laughs> Anyway, these are some of the lads that's helped with. Jimmy Lawrence, still record appearances now, 498. So this day, no goals. Anyone know why? Oh, eh? Keep eye, exactly. Uh, Bill McCracken, Northern Irish defender, famed for the offside trap. In fact, he was that good, I think he kept about six or seven clean sheets in that year, in his last year, they uh, changed the offside rules. You know, from the forward attacking player to the goal line, there used to be three defenders that changed that to two, which was still played to this day, and I think the goal ratio went at 1.2. So that's why Hedswine is still here to this day. <coughs> then we've got John the Jock Rutherford, Newcastle's youngest ever goal scorer, Arsenal's oldest ever outfield player, and I think that record still stands. And he's also remember Greg Rutherford, the long jumper, the ginger lad, his great grandson. So that's his affiliation with Newcastle. And last but not least, we've got Colin Beach here. Uh, he wasn't the biggest of lads, but he played all over the place. He didn't play on the left or in goal, but uh, you'd find him at St James's Park on a Saturday afternoon, but you'd find him over uh, the people staying at overheating on a Saturday night. He was a bit of a thespian as well. So 
bit of a boy. Also, he set up the players trade union. He was a trade unionist. Unfortunately, when he finished his footballing career, he went into journalism and he wrote some negative articles about the castle and he got bored from the ground. <laughs> so, that all ended up in tears as well. I just quickly, because we've got some sweets here. The big difference between upstairs, where you've got your executive box, these sweets. You go in the sweets, but you have to go outside to watch the match. So, we've got the, so Bobby Robson suite there, holds about 80. You get your drinks package with that as well. It's about seven and a half grand a season. But you drink from, what, one to six? So you've probably got a good five hours drinking. This one here is a Joe Harvey suite. That's a little bit more executive. Uh, you get a champion reception as well, and you migrate to the chairman's suite uh, before and after the games. That's about nine and a half grand, but you get a champion reception. Along the corridor, you've got the Bobby Moncur suite, you've got the Jackie Milburn suite, and there's also Heroes. But I'm gonna take you out and we're gonna have a look at the director's seats. <laughs> So right, all we've got here is these three rows of seats are only castle seats. These don't go and get sold on any daily uh, gamely basis. So as I said, Amanda usually sits there, Murdad will sit there. Uh, last time I think Southgate was here somewhere, but he sat there the game before he's there. He's, if Piff are here, everyone just sits where they get sold to sit. So, but when they're not here, Amanda will sit there, the Ruben Brothers will be around here. Anton Deck sat here the last time we were there. Sam Fender sat around here as well. It all depends who's here. Yeah, who's promoting or who's who's friends of the uh, the owners at the time. Uh, they'll sit around here. But any delegates, they'll all go into the chairman's suite and that's where they'll have their meals and have their drinks, etc. But for me, the two best seats are where you two are sitting there. Is their uh, Robson seats. And they were donated to the Robson family after he died. So if Lady Elsie or any of the other family aren't here, those seats won't be sold. They'll be kept empty as a mark of respect to Bobby Robson. Yeah. They are the Robson's family seats. Yeah. And, uh, lovely man. Lovely man. Just in front of where we'll have the press seats where the perspex is. That's where we are about 140 people there. Uh, invites only if on this journal. Where that emergency exit is, if anyone listens to it on the radio, <laughs> NUFC radio, that's where Ray's back in there, Anderson will sit doing their commentaries for the radio. Uh, I don't think there's much else to say about yeah. There is some good forward opportunities, but we are running very late, so I can only give you a couple of minutes to take the photos you want. Uh, nice one is to get a photo up there on the crest, you can touch that or down there. So I'm going to give you a couple of photos and then we're going to go downstairs to the main reception. Has anyone got any questions? <laughs> 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 Does <laughs> anyone want to ask for the questions? Anything at all? Go no ask for the questions. Score one. Eh? Uh, three one, your castle. <laughs> right. These lanyards keep the rhythm momentum. I'm not encouraging you to drink or eat, but you can get the Shiraz, you get a little bit of discount. But if you go to the club shop, you will get 10% off. Yeah? <laughs> Other than that, all that's left for me to say is you've been a pleasure. Thank you very much. I hope it's been informative. I hope you've learned a little bit about behind, behind the scenes. And then just have a safe trip home. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. And I've just finished the tour at St. James's Park with my family. Uh, got it as a Christmas present uh, for last Christmas. 
only just managed to get on it now and I've got to say it is absolutely fantastic definitely go on the tour because you will definitely enjoy it absolutely amazing tour also whilst I was here as well uh, there was also of course uh, some Saudis doing some uh, promotional work which looks like it could be on your uh, sponsor Saudi Air uh, so that would be absolutely amazing if it is um, but just like I say you know finish the tour and it is absolutely amazing plenty of footage as well of the tour for you guys to see so till next time make sure to hit that like share and subscribe and how are the lads